Hello YouTube, Snowflarky's Emos here. Today I am presenting my Barrier Statue Stun deck profile. So Barrier Statues are a deck that I've been real invested in for a long time. Probably was playing it in like 2014 and whatnot. And I've always kind of been playing a version ever since. Uh, it's one of my favorite decks to try to compete with. Um, Barrier Statues, for those who don't know, are just a series of monsters from every attribute that say uh, they don't have high stats, but you can normal summon them. And they say that neither player can special summon monsters except for the whatever monsters of the attributes they are. So during any metagame, uh, you can usually just find what attribute uh, isn't being special summoned regularly, play barrier statues of that attribute, in addition to some fossil dinas, uh, and uh, just cards to protect them, and, uh, you know, lock an opponent out of the game. It's a very protect the castle style deck, which is something I'm a fan of playing. I know it's not uh, very popular across the board, but for those of you who may be like me, uh, definitely something to check out. So with that, let's get into the card by card. To start, I am playing three copies of Fossil Dyna. Now, Fossil Dyna is the best barrier statue, despite the fact that it is not even a barrier statue because it is simply just a four star rock monster with 1200 attack, which is more attack than a barrier statue. Uh, but it just says neither player can special summon monsters. So it doesn't even allow the special summon of monsters of a specific attribute. So clearly since it's uh, better than the barrier statues, we got to be playing three of it. Uh, it also has another effect that if this card is flipped face up, destroy all special summon monsters on the field. Uh, do keep that effect in mind because sometimes it does go handy, especially if you don't win the coin flip. And that is an important thing about a barrier statue deck is a lot of times you can get hardcore punished for not winning the coin flip unless you uh, mess around some things with the build which is option this is more of the traditional all trying to win the coin flip type build uh, but yeah 1200 attack neither player can special summon monsters uh, pretty good keep him safe and your opponent can't special summon next I'm playing two copies of barrier statue of the storm winds uh, given the popularity of Godarla for a bit this barrier statue wasn't that great uh, you always have to be observant of a format of the format changes and note which attribute barrier statue is the best but outside of the Godarla and uh, whatnot uh, barrier statue of the wind is historically usually the best one just because there's not a ton of relevant wind decks that get played uh, it's got a thousand attack and says no monsters can be special summoned except for wind monsters so I still have two of it in the time being because it's good against the decks I'm playing up against but uh, I might swap it out I might swap out one of these for an additional copy of another barrier statue. I'm also playing a copy of barrier statue of the Inferno. Uh, usually the second best barrier statue historically because there's, you know, not a lot of fire decks around. Sometimes it uh, didn't work like in Solid Mangrave format and whatnot. But a thousand attack, no, neither player can special summon monsters except fire monsters. And last, I am playing one copy of Barrier Statue of the Torrent. Uh, it is the water one, so neither player can special summon any monsters except water monsters. So pretty cool. I like having the one of copies because usually there's going to be one Barrier Statue that your opponent is able to play with. And uh, so you just want to lower those odds. You know, you don't want to go all in on wind and then someone play a wind deck. You want to have a wind one maybe but then also a fire one and a water one so you always got to keep that in mind the ratios are very important and one thing to note about barrier statues is of course while this one's on the field uh, players can still special summon water monsters but if you ever get two barrier statues of different attributes on the field then it's the same as having fossil dyna because this one doesn't let you special summon except water and this one doesn't let you special summon and except fire which means you just can't special summon and uh, that's all right that's what we're aiming for and that is it for our monsters. We are playing a low monster count because uh, this is a Card of Demise style deck. Uh, we only do one normal summon per turn, so we don't want too many bricks. Next up, getting into our spell cards, I am playing three copies of Mage Power. Mage Power, of course, is an equipped spell that just says the equipped monster gains 500 attack and defense for each spell and trap card on the field. Um, there's going to be lots of spell and trap cards on our side of the field because everything that's not a monster is either a spell or a trap, and we have lots of traps in this deck. So equipping this to a Fossil Dyna, even with just this and one other set card, immediately makes this a 2200 attack monster, and any more gets it even higher. 
Um, if we have a full set five, this monster can be at 3,500, uh, 3,700 attack and the barrier statues at 3,500, which is very powerful, uh, especially hard to beat when your opponent can't special summon anything. And we really want that attack buff to end the game quickly. Um, I'm not playing any copies of the Moon Mirror Shield, which is often uh, pretty popular in here. Uh, just because Moon Mirror Shield will let you always win battle. But usually with Mage Power, you're still able to win battle all the time. And uh, when you're not battling monster, you just have higher attack to end the game quicker. And the recycling effect of Moon Mirror doesn't come often, doesn't come in handy too much from my experience. So I'm playing three, po uh, three copies of Mage Power. I want to end this game quickly. Mage Power allows me to do that. Next up, I am playing three copies of Pot of Extravagance. Uh, we absolutely cannot use the extra deck in this deck for any reason because nobody can special summon. So we're turning our extra deck into card advantage, uh, banishing six of those cards face down just lets us draw two. Uh, you know, the drawback of not being able to play any other draw cards doesn't matter. It's a good card to have. Next up, also, because we are not special summoning, I am playing three copies of Pot of Duality. Very important card. Gets us an important trap card to protect our monsters. Maybe gets us mage power to give us more attack. Or if we haven't drawn a Dyna or Barrier Statue yet, maybe it pulls one of those out for us. And we definitely need to see that. So definitely to help uh, stack your hand and field in a way you want, three copies of Duality gets that done. And last, I am playing the one legal copy of Card of Demise. Uh, we are not special summoning. We are playing tons of trap cards, so Demise is a must. We draw till we have three cards in our hand. At the end of the turn, everything is discarded. Now, of course, we can't uh, special summon, which isn't a big deal, and our opponent doesn't take battle damage after this card resolves. Uh, important to note, because you can play around. You can attack first and then Demise. Uh, but this will get us plenty more back row to keep our field safe, secure, and the game. And that is it for our spell cards. Next, we are going into our trap cards, and there's a lot of them. Starting off, probably the most important trap card is three copies of Dimensional Guardian. Uh, Dimension Guardian is a pretty cool card. Activate this card by targeting a face-up attack position monster you control. It cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects. If the targeted monster leaves the field, destroy this card. So that's pretty cool. So if we have Fossil Dyna or a Barrier Statue on the field, your opponent wants to attack over it or they want to Raigeki it or just any way they can target, uh, any way they can destroy it, uh, you just uh, flip Dimensional Guardian and suddenly they cannot. Uh, we used to play Safe Zone in this deck, which was nice because it protected you from targeting, and in exchange you couldn't attack directly. But since cards like Compulse and whatnot aren't really played anymore, uh, and mostly your barrier statue is getting removed by getting it destroyed, uh, I am perfectly fine going with Dimension Guardian. It's perfectly good enough and uh, a lot less restrictive because it allows us to attack directly still. So three copies of Dimension Guardian. Next up, I'm playing three copies of Phantom Knight's Sword. This card is so good in this deck. Uh, you basically target a monster on the field, give it 800 attack, and uh, the first time that card would be destroyed, when that card would be destroyed by battle or card effect, you can destroy this card instead. So instantly turns Fossil Dyna to a 2000 attack monster. That has one uh, time protection from being destroyed by battle or card effect. That makes it pretty cool. Of course, you don't have to worry about that if you got Dimension Guardian. It's still just flexible as an attack gain, and we want those stat gains because stat gains mean more life point damage and ending the game sooner, which means less likely for opponents to draw outs, which is the key to playing any stun deck, is you got to end the game before they can draw the outs. Because if you don't, they will. I'll tell you that. Uh, next up, I am playing two copies of Phantom Knight's Wing. Probably bump this up to three because it's pretty good. But uh, basically what this is, target a face-up monster on the field. It gains 500 attack. Uh, and of course, uh, this turn, if that card would be destroyed by battle or card effect, it is not destroyed uh, the first time. So if it happens multiple times, it's still going to get destroyed. But what, that's pretty nice. Uh, what this card really does and what's really nice about this card at three is if you have a, a barrier statue or a fossil dyna and a set of back row and your opponent has harpy's feather duster or something that uh, is going to wipe your back row and you don't have one of the prevention cards for that, Phantom Knight's Wing is nice to have because you can chain it 
uh, and it will give your monster protection from destruction, which usually will be enough since they can only summon one monster. They can't special summon. And uh, give it an extra 500 attack, which makes it a bit more resilient. So definitely pretty cool. Uh, worth considering playing at three. Next up, I am playing three copies of Solemn Judgment. Solemn Judgment at three was a, is a major power boost to this kind of deck. Um, essentially, uh, for paying half our life points, we can say no to any card, which is very important. If we have Fossil Dino on the field, our opponent has a limited amount of outs, and Solemn Judgment is just the counter to those outs. So if they get the uh, Spell and Trap removal to destroy Dimension Guardian and attack over it, you can say no to that. If they got Infinite Impermanence to try to negate your effect, you can say no to that. Forbidden Droplet, you can, you know, all that kind of good stuff. Um, and uh, for that reason, Solemn Judgment at three is a must. Next up, I am playing three copies of Dark Bribe. Always a suspect card in this deck uh, in the longer discussion, but I really like Dark Bribe in this deck. Uh, simply put, because uh, if you're playing Dark Bribe to negate something, it's probably because that card was going to literally lose the game if you let it resolve. And it is very unlikely that the one card your opponent will get to draw is going to be better than losing the game. Uh, so, of course, Dark Bribe, when an opponent's Spell or Trap card is activated, your opponent, uh, you know, you negate it, and of course your opponent draws one card. So, uh, I like the flexibility of the fact that it can negate spells or trap cards, although that does become less relevant over time, just because trap cards are harder and harder to play. But, Dark Bribe, uh, very cool. Um, I, I, it, it works out most of the time. I have only had very few occasions where the Dark Bribe draw has actually punished me. And instead, it, I've saved myself from, you know, Infinite Impermanence or Harpy's Feather Duster and, uh, you know, proceeded to win the game. So I think Dark Bribe still has a home in a deck like this. Next, I am playing two copies of Heavy Storm Duster. This is mostly a metagame pick for uh, my dueling group. We play a lot more decks that have spell and trap cards so i like to be able to pop them you know pop a crucial field spell pop some set cards uh, i can target up to two spell or trap cards on the field and destroy them in exchange i can't use my battle phase not a big deal if i play it during my opponent's turn um, if you don't go up against anyone who uses spell and trap or set back row or anything like that definitely sub this out for just more protection uh, but uh, you know otherwise you can play it like that Next up, I'm playing three copies of Blazing Mirror Force. I love this trap card, and this deck is one of the reasons why. Blazing Mirror Force is great because uh, when an opponent's monster declares an attack, which if you don't have an equipped card on your barrier statue or dyna, they are very low attack monsters, so your opponent will attack them. Uh, when they declare an attack, you destroy as many attack position monsters your opponent controls as possible, and if you do, take damage equal to half the combined original attack of the destroyed monster, then that damage is inflicted to your opponent. So what's nice is usually Mirror Force and whatnot are bad because so many cards float, but uh, with Fossil Dyna and Barrier Statues that don't let anyone special summon, the floating effects of a lot of monsters are now no a non-issue. So destroying them is not as big a deal. And what's nice about Blazing Mirror Force as, is that it destroys them and deals life point damage. And that life point damage comes in handy so many times because when, once you have Barrier Statue on the field, you need to end the game quickly. So any way you can stack extra damage is good, and Blazing Mirror Force does that. So they attack into a monster, destroyed, take damage, you end the game a lot quicker. So that is three copies of Blazing Mirror Force. Next up, I'm playing two copies of regular Mirror Force. Uh, it's Blazing Mirror Force, but without the burn. Um, sometimes the burn could be detrimental to you if you've had to Solemn Judgment a lot early and your opponent is ahead on life points. So if that is an issue for you, you can swap playing three of uh, this Mirror Force and maybe playing two Blazing Mirror Force. But, uh, you know, two Mirror Force gets the job done. When they attack, you destroy all attack position monsters. Uh, that's pretty cool. Definitely makes it threatening to attack. Uh, next, kind of to fill some space, I'm playing one copy of Crackdown. Crackdown is nice because you can target a face-up monster your opponent controls, uh, take control of that monster, and of course uh, it can't attack or whatnot. But this card is nice because if your opponent is 
you know, has a monster on the field and uh, you just want to get rid of it so you can attack directly or they can't get over it, you can't get over it because its attack is higher, that's fine. Just take it, uh, open up your opponent's board, attack them directly. Like I said, we got to end the game quick. And then lastly, because we are playing a bunch of normal trap cards, I am uh, flexing the last spot with a copy of Trap Trick. Uh, I can use this to pull out Heavy Storm Duster. I can use this to pull out Mirror Force. You know, I can use this to pull out Phantom Knight's Wing. Uh, any number of things, um, which is pretty cool. Uh, and, uh, you know, that gets cards out of the deck so that we're, you know, drawing more stuff. And, uh, you know. Perfectly, perfectly good card. Um, you could certainly sub it out for another copy of Phantom Knight's Wing or Mirror Force, or if you want some uh, more back row protection, a Boo Boo game has a pretty good home in this deck, um, and stuff like that. Lots of lots of trap cards you could switch around, but this is just some stuff that I'm playing now and a variety to give you ideas. And that is it for the main deck. As I mentioned when talking about Pot of Extravagance, uh, you do not special summon in this deck at all, so I'm not really going to talk about extra deck because you'll never, ever go into it. Uh, all I will say is that if you're playing Extravagance, of course, just make sure you have 15 cards. They can be 15 junk anything cards. This is just my standard Waking the Dragon extra deck. Uh, just have 15 cards so that you can use all your Extravagances. Um, now, of course, you can... If you got it, uh, I don't have Natis, but otherwise, uh, having Elder Entity Natis and Dogmatica Punishment might be very good. You know, get you some additional popping of capabilities. Uh, so do keep that in mind. You can do stuff like that. But other than that, there is not much to talk about with the extra deck. So that is it for my Fossil Dina Barrier Statue deck profile. Um, you know, it's a pretty simple deck to play. You just make it so that neither player can special summon, and then you turn it into Unga Bunga Yu-Gi-Oh! But I have a lot of fun making this undestroyable wall that just does not allow anything else to happen other than for it to beat you down. It's very fun when you got Guardian and Mage Power, and you're just attacking with this absurdly high attack monster that stops special summoning. Um, it's not for everyone, but if you like decks like this, uh, barrier statue is a must. I think it's a lot better than the inspector border standard stun deck. But anyway, uh, enough of that. That is it for that's it for me in this video. Let me know what you think. Let me know what your favorite barrier statue is artwork wise. I think mine is wind. I like the little wind guy. Uh, the dark one is pretty cool though. I wish the dark one was more playable, but Konami makes too many good dark decks for that to be possible. So, uh, you know, anyway, thanks for checking it out. I'll catch y'all in the next one.